back today and we are going to talk about our first polymer chain mount model, the ideal or fully jointed chain or Gaussian model. Um, so we're going to start off simple as we're going to see here with some basic, um, basically assumptions in this model to build up our polymer chain and basically what we're going to build up is from monomer to monomer. So we are going to build up from monomer 1 with some length of L1 to monomer 2, L2, and we're going to kind of place monomers and then we're going to figure out again the key parameter is going to be that root mean squared r vector end to end uh, distance from the start of our chain to the end of the chain. So that's what we're going to be working towards. That's going to be kind of the focus. And then to set, again, describing the size of that polymer, how does it change in good solvents, bad solvents, all of those kind of good things. So we are going to start with um, a very, very uh, uh, kind of unreasonable, uh, but very, very simple model. Um, so we're going to deal with an ideal polymer chain. So when we say ideal, this can mean uh, basically in what's going to be called a theta solvent. So this is the conditions where this model will apply. Uh, it could be also in the melt. So the melt is a kind of a very confusing term. It doesn't mean that the polymer is liquid. It means basically you're dealing with a um, basically a situation or basically a situation or like a bucket where I just have polymers in my uh, system. I have no solvent. So that's what it means, melt, no solvent. So just polymers. So uh, a theta solvent is also basically uh, a solvent that almost mimics the energetically, there's no distinction between the solvent, uh, basically interaction with the monomer interaction. Or basically the monomers in your polymer see the solvent as just basically other monomers. But we'll get into that uh, much, 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 much later on. So there are some key assumptions that we make in this ideal or freely joining chain or Gaussian model for polymers. So First off, we assume no intramolecular steric interactions, uh, meaning that this, inter, uh, this chain can intersect, uh, intersect itself along the backbone without penalty. So you see these crossover points here? That can't happen in real life. You can't invade another polymer space. You can't basically occupy volume that's already occupied by other atoms or polymers or other units. So in this model, we do not care about bond angles. We do not care about basically rotational angles. So we talked about those ice, um, those rotational isomeric states. So we don't uh, think about that. We basically don't, uh, we don't consider any kind of chemistry at all. So steric interactions, intramolecular interactions, nothing is considered here. All we are doing is just randomly, as we're going to see in a second, placing monomer, 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 and connecting them. So the placement of each monomer is completely independent of each other. So the placement is uncorrelated. So there is no correlation between this one monomer here and the next monomer here. They're completely uncorrelated. It doesn't matter. They're random, stochastic, whatever term you want to kind of uh, <laughs> uh, put on this. So you might think that this is a very unrealistic scenario. Like how can this model actually accurately reproduce the behavior of real materials? But for these situations, when we're in the uh, theta solvent or when we're in the melt, column, and, and you'll see actually in this course a lot of other situations, Polymers will behave like this. They can be described by this ideal uh, freely jointed chain model. So let's go uh, and actually see how we can predict. Because again, what we're looking for is we want an expression for the probability that I find basically some x or some RMS distance, uh, some distance away as a function of n and l. So I'm going to look at this. Well, the way I wanted to kind of describe these polymers is if I look at a histogram some probability distribution, I want to be able to get a function or derive a function where I can say, okay, the root mean squared end to end distance here is going to fall, basically some distance x from the origin. It's going to have some probability that I measure an RMSD with this value or this value or this value as a function of the number of monomer units, n, and the length of my monomer units, l. So that's what we're going to be kind of working towards. So uh, that's kind of the fo uh, focus here. So remember, uh, rotate, rotate any dimension, no constraints about double or carbon bonds. Um, so the way that we build up this model, if it's completely stochastic, if our steps are all uncorrelated, we're completely random, we can basically perform a random walk uh, in 1D. So this is very similar to a Monte Carlo simulation technique. So what we're going to do is basically generate a random list of numbers, either 1 or negative 1, and this will continue. And we're going to sum those up, and that's going to be where we position our monomers. So if it's 1, we're going to take a step to the right. If it's minus 1, we're going to take a step in the left. If 
that's another minus one, we're going to step here, and that's how we're going to build up and place our monomer. And at the end, we are going to see from our starting position here to whatever our final position from all these, you know, random steps, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, we are going to calculate uh, that distance. That is going to be our MS distance. That is what we're going to plot in this histogram here, and that is what we're going to find. So let's make sure, or let's, let's now, uh, we're going to kind of approach this in two different ways. One's going to be from this kind of probabilistic um, approach. The other one is going to be using a kind of mathematics. It's called the mathematician's ideal uh, chain model, and we'll be using essentially the dot product. But we're going to start off here uh, just by looking at um, a probabilistic approach. Uh, we're going to use some statistical mechanics techniques. I would look into uh, basically that supplemental uh, thermodynamics lecture that I posted on our uh, Canvas site. So if you have any questions with that, after this lecture and after going through some of the derivations, please let me know, and we'll have a little uh, statistical mechanics office hour. But we won't get too deep into statistical mechanics in this course, so don't worry too much. Now, before we get started, let's kind of think about this. If I have a random walk in 1D starting from my origin, so let's say I start from my origin right here, and I'm moving back and forth in 1D x. After, if they're completely uncorrelated, completely random number of left and right steps. So if I go, if I step right, I'm going to name this as a positive step and plus I'm going to name this n minus step. So if they're completely uncorrelated and completely random, and if I, I should on average have the same number of right and left steps, what should be my basically r vector on average, if I take statistically? It should be zero. There's an equal number, if there's, on average, there's, if there's no reason that there's more right steps or left steps or positive steps or negative steps, they should have the same number. Basically, we should sum that end-to-end -end distance should be zero. So, uh, that should make sense, hopefully. <laughs> uh, but let's go ahead and we're going to try to prove that, uh, basically, in this derivation. So, always keep that physical picture in mind, remember, in this course. So, let's go ahead and look over the next page. So, let's take, again, we're going to take this probabilistic approach. So, my r vector my root mean squared, and then distance, my RMSD, it is just going to be, at the end of the day, it is going to be the number of left steps, or the number of right steps, number of positive steps, minus the number of negative steps, times L. So if I build up my polymer, and if it's, you know, uh, so if I build up my polymer, this step, this step, this step, this step, again, this is in 2D, but imagine we're in 1D. Actually, this that is, that is imagine this is in 1D. So if I go right, left, right, left, it's kind of hard to see in 1D. <laughs> but either way, uh, <laughs> that distance, that end-to-end, -end, so if I do here, so if I take a step here, and then a step here, and then a step back, and then a step here, and here, that distance here from my starting point to that finish vector, that is just going to be this distance here, that r, it's just going to be the number of right steps minus the number of left steps times the length of my uh, the length of my monomer unit. That's it. Uh, and again, the total number of steps we take, the total number n in our random walk is just going to be. You can only go right and left in one D. Uh, you can see how again it gets a little bit more complicated in three D. But we're going to see. Actually, we don't even have to consider that step. We're going to use a very very kind of cool uh, principle named after, again, one of our famous uh, thermodynamic people, Boltzmann and superposition. So hopefully you remember that. So now, hopefully you remember some statistics. So the question is, what's the probability, again, that I have an RMS distance? Like, again, we're looking back at some of this probability distributions. Uh, this is our RMSD. So we're trying to figure out, what's the probability, starting from my origin, what's the probability that I end up at some distance x here, some distance x here? That's kind of the question that we're trying to figure out. Well, the probability is, or, you know, that distance is going to depend on basically n plus, right? So the question that we're asking is, basically, what's the probability of getting n plus heads, or, you know, n plus n positive steps out of a total of n steps? Well, hopefully, uh, again, uh, this is a markup process, so positive and negative steps are equal. So hopefully we remember from uh, basically statistics, we can just use basically this binomial distribution, this uh, coefficient. So the probability, you, know, you could kind of think of it, probability of getting um, you know, so many heads from uh, basically flipping coins from heads and tails, you, you obtain the same kind of uh, uh, expression. So this binomial distribution equation, so this is our probability. 
So it's the n factorial, so the total number of steps, divided by n factorial of the positive steps and the n factorial of our negative steps. Or if, we just, if we're just kind of concerned with this n positive steps, we could just rewrite this equation again using equation four from above. So we're substituting in here for n minus solving, and that's how we get this expression below. So this gives us, this uh, capital omega is basically the number of microsteps. It's basically the number of ways that we could kind of, again, um, distinctly or uh, distinctly arrange, or we could have distinct number of n plus, arranging n plus steps out of a total of n steps. So this is telling us how many distinct ways are, you kind of think of it, if you have a system of marbles. So some marbles are blue or red here, and some marbles are blue. And I have just a certain number n slots that I could put these marbles in. What are the number of ways I could arrange these uh, n plus, I have to think of these, these n plus number of red marbles? Same thing here. So these are the number, once we do this calculation, that's the number of distinct ways that we could kind of arrange uh, these number of microstates. So that's what we're going to be kind of uh, working with here. So now uh, that's kind of our expression going forward. But again, we're trying to obtain an expression for probability here. We want the probability, we want to be able to plot like a histogram. Uh, what's the probability of measuring some root mean squared end and distance, end and distance as a function of x and and l? That's what we're driving towards. So hopefully, again, from statistics, we should know that the total number of microstates of any kind of system here, going from n plus equals zero to n, that is just going to be 2n. Again, that's your just binomial distribution. Again, if you're kind of a little bit um, shaky on your statistics background, let me know. But again, this is kind of just a derivation. We're going to kind of get to the key uh, point in a second. So we've got this. So the probability is just going to be, this is the total number of microstates. So the number of ways I could arrange n plus divided by the total number, which is going to be 2n, that is going to give us, which is just this. We'll see this on 2n n plus factorial, n, n factorial minus plus factorial here. That was, sorry, just basically this expression here. That is going to give us our probability. So uh, once we have that expression, and we'll see that pop up right here. Again, same thing, but much, much, much nicer drawn. <laughs> uh, now we can kind of do some uh, tricks. Uh, so again, we want to write this expression, as we see here, as a function of x and a function of n. So you can express and take uh, kind of the natural log, which we're going to use in a second, uh, and use Stirling's formula here. You could take the natural log of this probability in the 1D. You could do a lot of math here. I'm not going to go through that, but you can convince yourself and let me know if there's any mistakes uh, <laughs> in that math uh, there. Hopefully there's not. Uh, and we could use this expression that x, oops, excuse me, the distance x is going to be, again, very similar. It's just going to be the number of positive steps times L minus number of negative steps, which is this expression here, because again, n minus is equal to n minus plus steps times L. That's it. So once you have this expression, you could kind of plug in, rearrange, uh, do a lot more uh, kind of fun math here, and eventually you'll get to this expression. So hopefully, again, Gaussian, really joining chain ideal Gaussian model. Uh, what does this expression look like? Well, I'll tell you what it looks like. It looks to me like this expression. Probability of square root pi and sigma times exponential minus x squared over two sigma squared. Looks to me like a Gaussian expression. Our Gaussian equation, uh, <laughs> equation that we've hopefully seen in Engineering 110 and, and elsewhere as well. So, we have shown that for an, a completely uncorrelated uh, random walk, the probability of finding some end-to-end -end distance, a distance x away, is basically, it's just a Gaussian distribution. So that's, and it kind of makes sense, right? Uh, what is this telling us? So if we look at it here, we look at our Gaussian. Let's kind of really think about it. So at zero, we have a high probability. And as we get to higher and higher x's, so as our RMSD increases, what does that mean to what's happening in our polymer chain? So this distance x, it means our polymer is becoming more, much, much, much more elongated. That is very, very improbable. So that is not going to happen uh, often. So our probability drops off. 
Because again, as we get closer to zero, which again, which is where we expect, right? The R on average should be around zero. The probability increases. We shouldn't, fear, you know, our polymer wants to have the highest number of microstates. It does not want to be elongated. It does not want to be uh, very, very uh, kind of compressed and, uh, you know, uh, in that kind of extreme state. So here we are not going to get uh, many scenarios here where the polymer is elongated, either in the positive or minus x direction. So that is essentially what we're going to kind of deal with here. So we want the polymer wants to maximize the number of microstates. It wants to maximize entropy. So we're going to have the highest probability that it's here at larger distances extended, not favorable at all. So hopefully that matches with our intuition. So the other thing that we kind of see here, which is really cool, uh, and we'll go on to the next page and show this, is we could, you know, now, uh, oh, we actually, let's go back here one second. We'll go back to this in just a second. Looking at this equation, what is sigma in terms of n and l squared? So the standard deviation of this probability distribution is basically sigma squared is equal to n l squared, or sigma equals n to one half l. We'll come back to this a bit later, but this is a kind of a really, again, it tells you basically the width of this distribution is going to be n to the, uh, n to the half l. We'll come back to that in just, just a second. But, uh, you know, it's a really, really kind of powerful expression. So that is the solution in 1D. And actually, we can make this, uh, we can do and make our own random walks in Mathematica as well. So here, let me zoom in. I am basically creating a random walk function. So I'm creating a random walk list of, let's say, 100 points. And it is going to accumulate. So it's just going, choosing from minus one step or one step, and it's accumulating those steps. Here, if I shift this under again, see a little bit more reasonable. That was a really strange jump. So what I've done here is I plotted. Uh, so I've done this. Uh, I've done a random walk with 10,000 monomer units here. Uh, I've subtracted the final step, which is this minus one. So in this distribution, I've taken this last point in my trajectory, subtracted it from the first point in my trajectory here, and I've repeated this a thousand times. So when I do that, I see, oh, this is my distribution. So again, this is telling me that the probability of ending up 300, you know, n times l, uh, basically RMSD away. This is the, this is this calculation is my root mean squared displacement. The probability of ending up this far away is very very unlikely. And you can see if I change the number of, uh, so this, if I change my number of monomer units, n, it shrinks, right? The curve is not the same. So if you look at the x-axis from here to 1,000, we're going to see we increase. See, the range is increasing. It makes sense, right? Because, we, again, we just said that the standard deviation scales with n to the 1 half. So as I increase my number of monomer units here, 100,000, let's see if my computer can handle this. Uh-oh. Around there, it starts to kind of struggle, but you'll see the, let's see if this runs in time, or I'm going to have to abort it. Oh, see, it works. So we're already at 1,000 as well. So you can see how the curve, again, we're still centered around zero. That's still highly probable, and it becomes much high, much less probable as we increase. So again, our uh, intuition matches with the math <laughs> that we've done here. So let's go back here, and let's, excuse me. So this was the solution in 1D. Now, you might say, okay, well, we, you can actually do the same procedure and uh, figure out in 3D, but we can use uh, basically this concept of superposition principle, the Boltzmann superposition principle. Boltzmann superposition principle. And we could figure out that we could just basically multiply the solution 1D to, uh, in X, Y, and Z and create a 3D uh, solution. And... We could use our R terminology, just from our hopefully geometry <laughs> uh, expressions that we all know, and find the solution in 3D and rewrite this expression in terms of R. And you see, we kind of get, again, very similar expression. We still have that sigma squared equals squared. So what is the probability uh, if we integrate this into this spherical shell, the volume of, of finding a polymer from, that has some RMS distance from zero to infinity? Well, it better be one, hopefully. <laughs> uh, we can't have a polymer that has an RMSD longer or, you know, uh, we will find some polymer with an RMSD uh, that has to be between zero and infinity. Uh, 
uh, it has to be there. That probability must be one. And again, that's kind of the, you know, when you take the integral of that probability distribution, it's the probability of finding a polymer chain with this, you know, with some distance, with some RMS distance that goes from zero to infinity. So that must be one. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, the cool thing is if you take the second moment of our distribution, we find our R squared is equal to an L squared. So you can take this der uh, derivative. And also, if you take the first moment, so first moment of our distribution, on average, our R vector should be zero. Again, everything's making kind of sense where it can, you know, uh, because that second moment of the distribution gives you your uh, standard deviation. So we're getting everything, or sigma, or your variance. We're getting everything, uh, that is actually, second moment is the variance. So we're obtaining everything, uh, the math is matching with our intuition. Now the cooler thing that we see here is, now I can figure out for the, uh, basically for, the math, for this uh, ideal chain, a fully joined chain uh, problem, we know that now my R squared equals an L squared. Additionally, I know that my R squared to the one half, my root mean squared end to end uh, distance is n to the one half L. So I found my scaling behavior for this function. Now, how does this compare to the contour length? So this is for ideal, excuse me. For my contour length, the fully extended chain, contour, I found that my r squared to one half was equal to n l. That's it. So we see, and this should make sense as well. Let's go all the way back and confirm that. <laughs> So my contour length, as we saw here, is just NL. So let's go back here. Actually, that's, so this makes sense because it's saying that for, if my ideal chain model, when we're not fully extended, my RMS NN distance will be smaller than my contour length right here. That's it. That's what we're kind of dealing with. That's what we're working with uh, in this solution or in this problem or uh, in, the, in this model. Uh, so. Everything kind of matches. Hopefully everyone's, uh, again, there's some math skips, but again, the key thing is that physical understanding. So the physical understanding matches with our math. Um, so what we're going to do in the next uh, video is we are going to look and derive this a little bit differently. So instead of a probabilistic perspective, we are just going to use the dot products. So we're going to see if we obtain, hopefully we obtain, obtain, obtain the same um, essentially scaling. So we're going to build up and we're going to have many, many, many kind of scaling, seeing how the RMS distance scales as a function of n for different scenarios. So keep those in mind. Keep in mind, again, the ideal chain, ideal chain model ignores all types of bonding uh, and all these other considerations. So we're going to have to kind of deal with that um, uh, and add on some complexity. And we'll get to that, not in the next video, but the next video with uh, our chemist chain model. So uh, that's about it for today. Thanks. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.